That was an awesome time. Very glad that we got to have a little bit moment there with our first junior qualifier for Worlds. I was very happy. Very happy for him. I yeah. was very excited. Not many kids get to say they get to take their mom to Hawaii. So uh, <laughs> You mean for, Tokyo, right? Yeah. <laughs> I guess I know. It's I, I'm, I'm pretty sad that I messed that up. I was thinking about last year. I'm also, like I said, guys, kind of sick. So still trying to. Okay. Where are we yeah, at? we're sick. You know, so. Yeah, yeah. Delulu. Yeah, a little yeah. Delulu. No, so it, uh, sorry I messed up. But, yeah, it's still nice that uh, he's going to be able to take I'm his mom happy. to Hawaii. Very nice. Um, but, anyways, back to the action. Back to the semifinals. Semifinals. What do we got going on? We got the one, the only, Olivia once again facing off. Well, not once again, but... We have yeah, Olivia once, once again, again. Yeah. but we also have her with again, a new opponent, Ashton Cox. Yes. We've seen both of these trainers before, but we're going to see them in a new context, a new light, and we're excited to see where they take this next game. Did When we were watching Ashton, I don't recall, did Ashton win? Ashton I think it was a 2-0. Ashton did win. It was a 2-0. Yes. It was a pretty, con uh, pretty concise 2-0. Um, both trainers are very good. Like when we saw Olivia, Olivia was playing against Eric and um, was playing really yes. well against Eric, right? Mm -hmm. Eric has uh, since then dropped out of the tournament. He lost in the quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. He lost to Marcus. Um, and as we just saw in the last game, Zane and Marcus are going to go up against each other, two Pelipper teams that are playing in the semifinals. So we're going to see a Pelipper team in the grand finals. Oh. Um, and now we're going to have to see who will face said Pelipper in the grand finals between Olivia and and Ashton. Let's touch on the teams real quick. We've seen both teams on yeah. stream. What are your thoughts? What do you think is going to be, you know, the sort of the game, the decider, the win factor? Well, with my memory span, these are basically brand new teams we're seeing for the first time. <laughs> so I'm going to proceed as if they are, you know. We're seeing the Flutter main coming out. Protosynthesis, as usual, you know, have no other real choice. But with that Protosynthesis, it's going to be buffing the special attack with the choice specs on top of it. It's going to be a huge, heavy-hitting special attacker. Uh, and it's not going to buff the attack because the speed is higher. So oh, it, it is. Will, it will be buffing the speed okay. for sure. Um, gotcha. Yeah, the speed will get a little bit of a boost. Um, but it, it's still, talking about Fluttermane, we haven't seen Fluttermane at, like, not at all. But we haven't seen yeah. it very common. It hasn't it, it's done been like about things. 15 to 20% of the teams that we've seen on stream, which is pretty strange. Mm -hmm. As Fluttermane is, has, like, a 60% like pick rate. And uh, when we have seen Fluttermane, it hasn't been doing Fluttermane things. It hasn't true. been just sitting there wiping on uh, both Pokemon. It's just kind of like a... Pokemon that comes out, Moonblast. I right. believe that was Ashton's game where we yeah. did see the Ash. Yeah, Moonblasting out. But what is unique about Ashton's uh, Fluttermane is it's running Misty Terrain. We did right. not see that come into play in the previous game, but with the choice specs, Misty Terrain, you know, it's a little bit of a specialist kind of uh, flavor, I guess. You, you really have a specific scenario in mind. What that scenario is, I'm not too sure where you're going to want to be clicking on that Misty Terrain, but I'm very excited to see what Ashton has in store for us. But let's you, take a look more. Oh, what were you going to say? You do got to think that uh, Raging Bolt has Terra Fairy, so at least helps it out a little mm -hmm. bit, I guess. I think you'd prefer to uh, Specs to Dazzling Gleam, though. Yeah, the, having it specs and having Mr. Misty Terrain as a fourth option is yeah. a bit strange to me. Um, I feel like Fluttermane can have better usages with that fourth move. Anyways, but yeah, back to what you were saying. On to Olivia's team. Mm -hmm. Get Gouging Fire, which has obviously been pretty good, uh, especially for Olivia too, because Olivia's game plan, she kept pivoting, pivoting, and pivoting, yeah. and pivoting, and using those howls and using those breaking swipes to not boost herself and, you know, sort of lower the stats of the other, uh, of the other trainer's Pokemon and stuff. Gouging Fire was one of her best Pokemon. Um, you got Shen Pao, Landos and uh, Landorus Incarnate, Rilla Boom, uh, Ogre Pong, and King, sorry, Ogre Pong Wellspring, and King Gambit. Um, so you know, very diverse team that we got going on on both sides. Both teams kind of going for the sort of balance method. Nobody's sort of leaning into any sort of strategy. Um, so we'll kind of see what happens here. I need your thoughts though. Both of these players are underdogs, right? Ashton Cox, even Ashton Cox is, is an amazing player. 100%. But Ashton took out the third seed. Olivia took out the number two seed. What are your thoughts going into this? I need initial pregame thoughts. Uh, pregame thoughts for me is that this game is going to be very exciting nonetheless. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to see, I'm, I, I'm really hoping we can see that King Gambit coming into play on Olivia's side because I think that was the Achilles heel uh, against her, her game against Eric. Uh, was that King Gambit would have been such a huge threat it just didn't get to be utilized properly. Um, kind of, in fact, was what ended up spelling doom for her. Uh, was it kind of came in at a really bad time, got knocked out, and then that was just a, a snowball effect in Eric's favor um, from that point going forward. But I feel like here, if I'm looking at Ashton's team once again, 
I don't see any intimidators actually so stat reduction isn't actually going to be much of a factor in this game unless we see anything like um i mean you have somewhat of stat speed reduction reducers, i guess with yeah. chen pao but like that affects everybody so I, I mean maybe there's a little bit of stat reduction i guess technically <laughs> but like not really maybe this is a, a technical thing but it doesn't do the -do 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 -do, like when the, the yeah. defense does it count yeah. as a stat reduction i feel like it's I more like not, a right? i feel like it's more of like a Aura? It's an, it's an active, like, ability. Yeah. So even if it's they like do switch cut. out and they come back in, it still does the same thing. Yeah. Right? You can't get rid of, like, the stat drop and whatnot. Yeah, so I don't think it, I don't think it counts as a stat drop. I think it's just more like your stats have been lowered. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah. It's interesting. A passive thing. So I, even that, I don't think, would have much of an effect for King Gambit. So I kind of take back my previous statement. I want to see less King Gambit because as we're going to get started with this first battle, we're going to see how both players want to have their strategy line up right. to be as favorable as possible. We're going to have the Ogre Pond gouging fire leads to start off on Olivia's side, followed up by the Urshifu and Xian Pao on the side of Ashen. And we're getting underway in this next battle for the semifinals. Winner qualifies to the Grands. Yeah, pretty safe lead uh, for Olivia. It's been kind of her standard lead. She's been going for the Ogre Palm while spraying the Gouging Fire. She tends to do this kind of frequently, especially in the game ones, where she doesn't really know what's going to happen on the other side. Ashton going for the Urshifu and the Chen Pao, sort of instant damage. Uh, so we'll kind of see what ends up happening here. Uh, but overall, pretty safe. Ogre Palm is going to go for the Follow Me to redirect any attacks. Um, and so we'll kind of see what Ashen ends up going for here. The Breaking Swipe comes out from uh, Gouging Fire, lowering both Chen Pao and Urshifu's attack. Obviously, you're going to be super beneficial since both are physical attackers. The close combat comes through on Ogre Palm Wellspring. Gets a bit more than half HP. Is Chen Pao going to Ice Gold Crash onto Ogre Pong? It will. Ooh, and Ogre Pong survives, though. still lives on about, like, 2 HP. Yeah, it's still in this battle. It can still... Mm, it's not going to be too, too effective. Again, a big part of Ogre Pond is being able to take hits, even redirecting them towards Ogre Pond. So Ogre Pond, utility of it is kind of gone, but you still have to commit something to get rid of it, you for sure. You still got to think, though. Ogre Pond is still super strong, too. Yeah, it can still Ivy Cudgel. So you yeah. have to do something to it, but it's not going to be as big of a problem as it normally was. It uses half it loses half of its utility, and so insofar as the, its ability to take hits is useful. But we're going to go for the how next maybe just going all out just trying to because the defense drops from uh, Chan Pao affect Urshifu as well plus the close combat reducing his defense Urshifu is in a pretty bad spot to take an Ivy Cudgel which is most likely about to actually I Icicle Clash is going to miss Gouging Fire and Ivy Cudgel coming out onto the Urshifu is going to knock it out because of all... It's not very effective. Yeah. It's a crit. I don't even think the crit mattered too much, but all those with, defense reductions... Yeah, and with the attack boost, the defense reductions, yeah. it's just going to be a pretty clean, clean hit and knockout. Yeah. Mugus is going to come back out and replace it. And it is a good switch in, but now Gouging Fire with the attack boost it is just going to be super detrimental yeah. to any Pokemon on Ashen's side. Like on Amoongus or Gen Pao, it really doesn't matter right now. And the thing is, you're really putting yourself in a bad situation if you're Ashton here. Because you're either going to commit with Gen Pao to Sacred Sword, or uh, I guess you could Sucker Punch. But you want to do something with a little bit more potency behind it onto the Gouging Fire so it doesn't do a huge amount of damage to your Amoongus. Yeah. So you either commit to an attack onto the Gouging Fire, or you read that it's going to go for uh, a... Uh, burning Bulwark or Blazing Bulwark and you go into the Ogre Pond again. Bulwark, yeah. But it's it's a bad thing to do. It feels bad to use your Chan Pao to hit Ogre Pond when it has 1 HP. So you have to make a hard read one way or the other. If you're Ashton, we're going to have to see what he's going to go for here. Terrestrialization is going to come out onto one of his Pokemon, which is going to be the it's Amoongus. It's going to be the with the Terra Water. Water. And this is a good, this is a good choice from Ashton cover. right here. Yeah, this, is, this is a really good play. Going for the Terra Water is going to resist both Pokemon right now. Obviously, uh... Gouging Fire wants to go for the Heat Crash, chooses to do it on the Chen Pao, which is just going to knock it out. And, and like you said, you had to make a gamble. You had to sort of choose which one you really think he's going to target. Amoongus is going to successfully... Be oh, it does he chooses to go for the Ogre Pong, but it doesn't affect the Ogre Pong, because the Ogre Pong is a Grass type. That was a strange turn. I, uh, uh. Do you think that he was going to swap out of the Ogre Pong? I'm not sure. That, that was that was definitely interesting to say the least. But now, for sure, Fluttermane is going to come out, 
and the Dazzling Gleam is probably going to be able to pick, it's going to be able to clean off both Pokemon. Um, potentially not uh, Gouging Fire because, you know, it's neutral and uh, I, don't, I don't know. We'll kind of have to kind of Yeah, no see. boosting on the side of the Fluttermane, so knocking out the uh, the Gouging Fire is a little bit of an optimistic oh, I forgot play. I had Choice Backs. It's Choice Backs. It's probably going to knock out both right now. Okay, yeah. Ooh, no. Gouging Fire does live uh, off a little bit of HP. No. Yeah, Ogre Pond finally get rid of that. It was too much of a problem to just leave sitting there. Uh, but again, taking down the Gouging Fire to 1 HP. Once again, you're now facing down a Pokemon that you don't really want to commit a whole move into, but you can't ignore it, or else it's going to be a problem. It still has attack boosts uh, from that Howl. About 1 HP, Rillaboom coming in next. With that Fake Out threat, it is going to be a big problem to Ash. And once again, you have to make one hard read one way or the other. So the Flutter main is going to be immune to a Fake Out. Thankfully, you don't have to worry about it there. But Amoongus, do you predict the Fake Out coming out? And do you try to play around that? Or what, what do you really do here? Realistically, there's not a lot you can do. You can't switch into anything to call out the Fake Out. You just kind of have to take it, unfortunately. But in any case, we're Ash gonna is just going to give up the battle right yeah. now. Not even going to try and, like, sort of salvage anything. Ash is just going to give it up. And, and honestly, that's kind of fair. You do yeah. have to think, right? We're in the top cut. We're going up against the best of the best. Like, the mm -hmm. best players are here and ready to compete. Um, so, you know, it, interesting to see that they do end up canceling the battle. I, I would have thought that they would have at least played one more turnout. But um, I, I guess we'll kind of see what happens, goes on in the game, too. Anyways, Olivia played that pretty well. Yeah, pretty solid overall. Um, oh, <laughs> I said like two things at the same time there again. We're sick. Forget us. But uh, two solid plays all around, allowing Olivia to maintain the advantage there, maintain the lead over Ashton's plays. Um, I feel like there was a little bit more room to exploit uh, the Fluttermane there. Uh, maybe try to get it up even a little bit earlier. And that Ogre Plant just being such a, a thorn yeah. in the side, you needed to get dealt with earlier as well. The, the Urshifu, I think that was a little bit of a misplay. Might not have realized how fragile it really was. Mm. Defense drops coming up from Chien Pao plus the close combat defense drops. Yeah. It, no one would have seen that really coming um, unless you paid attention to those. <laughs> you know, no one really thinks about that. Yeah, and all you know, choice specs does give you a huge boost in that special attack. Mm. It does lock you into that one move. Yeah. So leading it to come in to where you only have two Pokemon left so you can't switch in and like, you know, get back out of a move, it isn't like that great, right? And now you're locked into Dazzling Gleam and you have Pokemon that resist that. So, you know, it, it's not really going to be that great. Mm -hmm. Like you said, if you do bring it in earlier and you have Pokemon to go back to, uh, you at least have an option afterwards if, you know, Dazzling Gleam isn't the best option. Okay, let's go back, let's pivot yeah. again, and then we'll see what happens later. And at the very least, you're going to do a really good amount of damage, no yeah. matter what. Like, it's such a no strong move. Mean, this entire tournament has been doing a ton of damage. Exactly. And that's its whole thing. Really. I, I feel like you got to put faith. It's like the there, cheaper version. There is version. other usages. Like, you can use Icy Wind and stuff like that mm. to like for, like, speed control or whatever. Um, like, there are, I guess, sort of other niche uses. Niche usages for Fluttermane, but yeah, like you said, it's mainly, especially this Fluttermane, is mainly there um, for you know just out uh, damage output. I feel like though, it's like the less committal version of the whole uh, Articuno strategy, where you just have a Pokemon that just presses one button that does a lot of damage no matter what. It works out in your favor every time, uh, but. Hopefully we're going to see that utilized here as we're going to start off in this battle. The Grassy Glide immediately taking Ashton's Urshifu to super low HP. U-turn in response, going to do about half. Going to have to switch back out. Going to pull in a next Pokemon here. Who is this going to be though? We have the Hearth Flame Ogre Pond and the Chen Pao in the back line. Could be brought out. Should I probably feel like... be Chen Pao in this situation. Ice Crash uh... one hit knocks out any Pokemon that's on the field right now. Although it, it, if it takes a hit, it's not great for it, right? But you Gen have to remember, it is switching it off of a U-turn, so there's still moves coming into play here. Sure. Uh, you know, like, or what if Landers is targeting it with something? You're not going to... Oh, Substitute. It's going to go for the Substitute, which is pretty fair. Even if Landers did target it, I still don't think it would have done a considerable amount of damage to, like, you know, for Chen Pao specifically. And you got to remember, Chen Pao is super fast. Exactly. Yeah, Rillaboom... Rillaboom f fell. I, 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 we weren't even paying attention to what just happened there. Rillaboom, I think, falls from the Pollen Puff. 
it was the uh, sludge bomb coming up from oh, the, the sludge bomb Amoongus. My only real point or uh, concern with the uh, Chan Pao switch in is if there was a move coming up from Landorus onto the Urshifu intent, um, then it might have survived the thing, and you're not really having a focus dash anymore, which is such a huge part of Chan Pao's game plan. And losing that so early would have, uh, I feel like, been a huge blow. But thankfully, not going to take any damage coming out into this next turn. Here we have the Gouging Fire alongside the Substituted Landorus. Things are looking a little scary on Ashton's side. To deal with this field, I'm not sure how you really want to approach it. You have to break through. You don't have any yeah. spread moves on Ashen's side. Gonna right. go for the Terrastalization. Gonna go for the Water Terra onto the Amoogus right now. Yeah, to sort of mitigate the damage that you would take from yeah. the Gouging Fire. Remember, Amoogus is a super bulky Pokemon. So getting that Terra off, even though like Amoogus is a support for Pokemon, sure, you might want to use your Terra type for, uh, for some offensive output. Um, it's still gonna mitigate some of the damage that you're gonna get from the Gouging Fire. Still goes for the Breaking Swipe though. Um, obviously, as you know, it's still like you can predict that uh, Moongus will go for it, that Terra. Ice Crash comes through and the substitute will fall. We'll see what Landorus has in store for us. And yeah, the Ice Crash finally going to break through. But I didn't get to see what move hit him there, but the Moongus is going to go down. It's probably a Sludge Bomb, I had to, if I had to guess. It was probably oh, yeah. a Sludge Bomb, and that was a good bet. It was either going to be super effective. Uh, or sorry, it was, it was going to be neutral either way. So, mm -hmm. and a crit going to make sure it's going to fall. Yeah, Ogre Pond now, the Earth Flame style coming out right next to the Chien Pao. The mold has been broken. Not going to do too much here, but it's still a cool effect nonetheless. Just Ashen gives up the battle again. Uh, With so much time left and so much room to work, does Ashen give up the battle again? Uh, I guess so. Did I just see that? Maybe. I mean... Am I crazy, or did I just see Ashen give up the battle again? It's still communicating, so... Uh... Potentially, but in case he hasn't given up the battle, what kind of place would you have liked to see him make? I mean, facing down the... Again, the Landorus and Gouging Fire, it's a pretty tough situation. Yeah, he did cancel There's the There's three Pokémon left on the field! He did not need to do that. There was three Pokemon left on the field. There was still time for some misplays from Olivia. There was no reason to go for that battle cancellation. Mm. I get it. Sure, you might have been on the like slightly on the back foot. A nice little fist bump coming out there. But y you might have been on the back foot, sure. But to cancel the battle like that? Uh, I mean... You gotta, you gotta put it yourselves in. Uh, I, realistically, okay, I don't know why you would cancel it that fast. Like, there's so much on the line, and there's a lot of opportunity to come back. But whether or not it was the right call to make, mm -hmm. you know, Olivia was still in a very good spot. That's very true. Um, yeah, Ashton. I think there were some outs, but if I'm looking at the team and the what the four that he brought objectively. There's just not much he could do to address the Pokemon that Olivia yeah. had brought out. There weren't... I feel like the, the lack of spread, the lack of uh, tankiness as well. You know, you had your Moongus water. But yeah. That's not really... I mean, it did take out... Okay, the more I talked, the more I realized that, like, okay... Maybe you shouldn't have uh, forfeited the battle, but still. There, there was definitely options. Sure, yeah. you're fighting maybe a little bit of a losing battle, uh, especially like with the team matchups. Like we've seen, we've seen some teams, like for example, we saw Marcus earlier on who was bringing out the Palipper team in the matchup just didn't fare, like, you know, work out too well for them. And now they're in the semifinals, right? So we, we see this sometimes where sometimes the matchups just aren't that great. You know, you have one opponent, one trainer with a team that just works really well against the other trainer. And I do get that portion, but Ashton was still playing sort of like he still had some good moves in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't see the reason for the cancellation right there. Yeah, you're on the back foot, sure. And, and if Olivia doesn't blunder, then you probably lose. But even still, it, it, it's still a bit questionable. But anyways, back to what you're saying on the point of Olivia. Olivia is an amazing player. We saw them playing against Eric earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw her playing now. Uh, Olivia makes like little to no mistakes. And at really least good in this reads tournament. as well. Pardon? And really good reads as well. And really good reads. Yeah, absolutely. 
So those are a lot of the elements that goes into making you a strong trainer. One that qualifies into the grand finals, mm -hmm. which Olivia has just done. Going to meet one of the Pelipper teams in the finals. One and, of the Pelippers, yeah. Yeah, whether or not that battle is still ongoing or complete, one of them is going to come out on top eventually. And they are going to be waiting in the grand finals to take on Olivia's very strong, very effective team. Uh oh! Oh! <laughs> oh Medusa's no! Fallen. The Nymph is gone! Oh, we'll Knocked have to get Kyogre that. too. Yeah. After oh. our break, we're going to have to go pick up that Bidoof. But before we go to a quick break, Owen, we're about to head into the Grand Finals, and we're seeing not a Psy Spam team, not the Articuno Blizzard Spam team. We're just seeing standard restriction Pokemon. Yeah, it wasn't the teams that we thought were going to make a push. You know, we sort of going into this had like mm -hmm. some conversations. We saw a lot of Psy Spam yesterday. So we thought maybe that was going to carry over in today. We saw a lot of uh, like Sun teams a couple weeks prior. We haven't really seen any of that at all. It's just been super balanced, super, ba oh, you know, super balanced teams and whatnot. We're seeing the Pelipper Rain team come back out for the grand finals, obviously, since we yeah. have double Pelipper. Magic. Magic. <laughs> Magic, nothing at all. No tricks, no nothing. Um, but yeah, we see the Pelipper team come through, obviously. Uh, so it'll be somewhat interesting. Uh, but I, I don't know. Yeah, we did think that there was going to be some more niche picks, some more, um, like, I, I guess we did see Trick Room. Saw Trick Room a little bit. Yeah. But it's been pretty standard yeah. for the most part all day. All day. Yeah. But we're going to see anything but the standard as we get ready to head into the grand finals. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us all the way up until this point. But we're about to reach the apex of the action here today. So if you miss anything, you don't want it to be this next game. So we hope to see you back after this quick break. See you soon.